Welcome in, college football fans. It's time again for the weekly Top 25 show. We have given you all our thoughts on the Week 7 games that, that we all watched this past Saturday, and we have put our collective college football thoughts together. Me and Mason have uh, ranked our own Top 25s, and that's what we have for you today. Um Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you will go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We're here every week, multiple times a week, making predictions, uh, reacting to games, uh, doing top 25 rankings, all, all types of fun stuff. Got got lots of commenters on the sh on the videos every week. So uh, come tell us how we're wrong. We, we love to hear it. Um, the top 25 is certainly something that, um, you know, it, it, Everybody's got their own top twenty-five, but we're we're kind of biased, and we think this is this is the only one that really matters. Uh, Mason, how you doing today, buddy? And uh, what what do you think about this top twenty-five? Before we put it on the screen here, man, I'm doing good. Um, I, I think we've got some interesting ties. You know, we've got four ties in the top ten, so it, it, it's it's pretty close up there, and there are a lot of contenders still. Literally, all ten. Um, are contenders for the playoffs and there are a few down in the bottom that that could you know come back uh for sure but um but right now i mean the top 10 is is jam-packed and um i'd love to see just this year i wish we i wish we had a 12 team playoff because it would be it would be fireworks you know um because i i really like all 10 of our our teams up top and <clears throat> um and I think that they could all beat each other in some ways, you know, with if things. This go is the right. first year I've really felt like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and I think we've got a, a clear one and two, you know, in a way. Um, and then they they've done a little bit to separate themselves from the other eight at least. Um, but I don't think that they're unbeatable either, you know. And you probably know what two two teams we're talking about at home, but um, but you know, I, I think that there's a. There's a little bit of a separation there, but not enough to to feel like they're world beaters or anything like that. Um, but yeah, let's get into it, man. Let's break it down. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at our top 25 here. So in that bottom row there, um, this is kind of the, the little island of misfit toys here. Um, minus Air Force. I won't I won't put Air Force into that. Air Force is undefeated, everybody. So Air Force Falcons, they are in the top 25 uh, until they lose. And uh, that's just kind of the way it is. They haven't lost a game this year. Um, and, and they're a pretty decent team. They're not bad. Um, Iowa is probably going 11-1. and one. Uh, UCLA's off a loss. Louisville's off a loss. They're both coming down in the rankings. So um, uh, not in love with that group there, but that's kind of just how we see it and we're, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time breaking those down. Let's go ahead and go up to that next row there. Um, tied at 19, we got Mizzou and Southern Cal. That would be a cool bowl game. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Um, at 18, we got Tennessee, 17, LSU. And at 16, we've got Utah. So, what... What do you think about this group? I don't think Tennessee should be this high, really, yeah. but you got to have somebody in there, man. So, um, what what do you think about this well, group? Right? You here? know what's interesting though about that, and I feel the same way. But they could very realistically beat Alabama this week, who we have at eleven. I know what. So, yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. then it's not that crazy to have them this high. Um, I, I think that I don't think they're a very good team. You know, we just talked, um, you know, earlier about our. Um, about the Tennessee and Texas A&M game, and Tennessee, you know, won that game, but they, it was very much a losable game for them, and had some special teams plays, um, you know, not occurred, you know, in their favor, then then they probably would have lost that game against a, a really bad Texas A&M team, but they could still beat Alabama, you know, so so um, possible. It's I think that I think that they're in a, a pretty good position um, up until the second to last week of the year. Where they've got to face uh, Georgia, but but yeah, so um, you know Tennessee's right there at eighteen. Um, LSU, who has one of the best offenses in the country, um, 
there, there's really not an offense. They still control their destiny in that SEC West, too, man. I mean, I still have them picked to win the SEC West. They were my preseason pick to win the SEC West. I still think Both that they're a lot yep. better than Alabama um, collectively, you know. Um, and then uh, Utah, I mean, they're still grinding, you know, without Cam Rising. And um, I think they've got a pretty tough week coming up. If I'm not mistaken, they've got a pretty good matchup. Uh, yeah. USC. Well, USC. Think. They'll probably beat USC. Um, and then uh, down there at the bottom, like I just mentioned, USC at 19, tied with Mizzou. I, if, if that if that bowl game you mentioned happened right now, I'd still pick Mizzou to win. But, um, you know, I, I just I, – yeah. Maybe maybe USC has some life in them somewhere. I didn't see it Saturday. I haven't seen it the past three weeks, uh, for sure. And yeah. um, I mean, week one they came out with with fireworks. They were explosive on offense. Zachariah Branch was doing things, and I'm thinking, man, this is a this looks like a playoff team. I mean, that with this type of offense, it's tough to slow an offense like this down. And they haven't shown up really. Um, they've just kind of kind of been regressing ever since then it seems like and um you know yeah. now now they're fairly in the top 20 so um and that's probably like, where like the eighth grade like the eighth grade guy in your class that has a full beard yeah uh they they just they just they they peak too early <laughs> they peak too early man okay they 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 started off the year so hot and i remember thinking wow out of the gate, huh? I mean, just already, already there. Um, not so, not so fast. Not so fast. Uh, USC's got some flaws, and and they were certainly put on display for everyone to see in that game. As a lot of people watch that game. Let's go into the next group: Duke, number fifteen; Ole Miss, number fourteen; Notre Dame, number thirteen; twelve; Oregon State, and eleven; Alabama. Um. I like Oregon State a lot in this group. Oregon State, everything is still right out in front of them. Notre Dame doesn't have anything in front of them necessarily other than the regular season games. I guess they're playing for like a New Year's Six Bowl maybe. Ole Miss because still got to go play Georgia. Um, that That's going to be a good – I can't wait to see that game. Ole Miss is going to travel to Athens, Georgia. Um, Duke is getting Riley Leonard back. Still got some big games. Um, so everybody on in this row controls their own destiny, really, except for Notre Dame. And I guess technically Ole Miss doesn't control their own destiny as they have a loss to Alabama. But, um, yeah, uh, I, I think this group is pretty solid, 11 through 15. I, th I think that's pretty much where everybody should be in that group, don't you think? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think right now <clears throat> I like Oregon State and Duke in this group the most. Um, just given what, where their schedule, um, it, where they're at in their schedule and what they have as far as trajectory. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think yeah. so. Um, I know that Notre Dame beat Duke, um, with Riley Leonard, but you know, Notre Dame doesn't have a conference championship to go play for Duke does. We'll see if they can do it. They've got to go play, uh, at Florida state this week. So that's going to be one really heck of a game. I, I, I hope that, Riley Leonard is back and, and close to 100% um, because that's a, that's a difference maker. And if he is, I, I'm, I'm picking Duke to win that game. I'll go ahead and tell you right now. Um, so that that's going to be a really fun one. Uh, Ole Miss, you know, they're they're kind of um, kind of stumbling at, at times and then they're they're full speed at times. You know, they've 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 done some things well offensively. Um, I, I'm still questioning their defense, but. They've got some some good games ahead of them, and, and they're still kind of uh, you know controlling their own destiny to, to some degree at least over there in in a weak SEC West right now that can't seem to find any offense. Well, you know, Ole Miss has a decent offense, you know, uh, relatively speaking. So maybe they're able to do something with that. Um, Notre Dame, you can kind of really forget talking about until bowl season. You know, that they, they are they going to play in a New Year's Six bowl or not? They, they're going to have to win out if they're going to do that. Um, and then you've got uh, Oregon State, who who really looks like a pretty complete, well balanced team, playing complementary football really well. I like what I've seen. Uh, they've shown the ability to pass it when they need to and run it when they need to, and that's that's the sign of a really good offense, a really effective offense. Um, and that's really about all you need to see from from an offense. And and on defense, they they do really well. They're probably like a top twenty five defense as well. 
Um, they're, they're a tough out for anybody. We'll see if they're able to hold up at the end of their schedule. Uh, then you've got Alabama, who struggled with Arkansas this week. They did find a way to win it, um, but you could really have Alabama as low as as twenty, and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't bat an eye about it. So um, I'm excited to watch this game against Tennessee this week to to really get a test of. Um, to really see if Alabama can get up for a game because they will be up for this game against Tennessee. Um, and then we'll kind of know what their potential is as a program. But right now it's been kind of dreary so far this season by the Tide's own standards uh, and by Nick Saban's own standards. Um, really excited to watch this matchup this week. Absolutely. Let's go into the top ten. Tied at number nine, we've got the Texas Longhorns and the Florida State Seminoles. Tied at number seven, we've got Oregon and North Carolina. And for number five, we've got Penn State. Tied at five. Out of, yeah. I'm sorry, tied at five. Yep, I'm we sorry, got, tied at five. Yeah, Penn Just State and Ohio different, State. Different row there. Um, so, look, we're going we're gonna to have number five settled this weekend, right? Um, so we'll, we'll know, uh, and I can't wait to break that game down. That's going to be, man, that's a big one, dude. I can't wait. Um, and that's, let's see. So that's at Ohio state, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yep, it is. Ohio state goes to Michigan this year. So they have Penn state at home. Um, Oregon and North Carolina being tied up right here. I like that a lot. That would be an awesome game. I think Oregon and North Carolina would be a hell of a game, uh, just like Oregon and Washington was, um, which kind of illustrates the point that anybody from this point on can beat anybody in that top row. There's there's very little doubt in my mind, and more than one time out of ten, it, it wouldn't have to be a lucky game or something. Right. Um, you know, it, it, we we got some some definite even teams here. Out of all the teams that are in this group, though, who do you think is the most phony? Because I think it's I think it's Florida State. Yeah, I agree. Um, they're, you know, much higher than the AP poll. I think they've still got them at like third, if I'm not mistaken. I know they're top four. Um, That's why I don't trust that AP poll, man. I agree. And, you know, we've been saying it, but um, for, for folks who may not have heard yet, you know, I, I strongly believe that Florida State's resume is not that great anymore. You know, the, the, the win against Clemson looks like, you know, they, they should have won by more. They definitely should have won by more against Boston College. Um, and then the LSU game at the beginning of the season, you know, I, I give them credit for winning that game, but LSU wasn't what they are now at that time. So um, kind of throwing a lot of shade at Florida State, and, I, and I, I don't really mean to to be like that, but at the same time, I don't see this as a playoff contending team. I think that they're um, kind of cruising for a bruise yep. in there, and, and they're going to get – somebody's going to grab them by the shoelaces here uh, pretty soon, I think. Um, Texas – Yep. You know, um, I don't think – I think they were off this week. So, I, I'm pretty sure them and OU both had a bye yeah. after that game. They were, yeah. So, not to, not anything new to report since the, the Red River shootout. Um, and then <clears throat> North Carolina took, took care of business against Miami. And, and I know everybody's going to say, you know, Miami just lost to Georgia Tech. They should have scored 41 against them. Uh, but – that that Miami team was one of two teams, uh, you know, along with Oregon that were top 10 on both defense and offense. So that's still, still a pretty complete Miami team. Now I think they're going to start to reel now, which is, it's going to make that, that win look a little bit, um, you know, less, uh, you know, um, less important, I guess for, for North Carolina and less impressive for North Carolina. But, but ultimately, uh, I think that North Carolina has got a really good offense. They're figuring things out. They get Ted's Walker back. He looks to be clicking with Drake May. Um, and, and we finally have Drake May poised and, and ready to, um, you know, be a, a playoff contender, hopefully. You know, we're, we're really hoping that since since Caleb Williams isn't able to do it and he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, maybe Drake May can. Maybe he can be that <clears throat> that top player in the country that's, playing in the big games um, of the year. We we sometimes miss that in college football, and, and I hope that this isn't yeah. another year where that happens. Um, then you got Oregon, who was just in a – I mean, they were fighting tooth and nail against against Washington. Um, you know, if a couple of 
calls went a different way and, and I'll, I'll invite you to go back and see our reaction to that game. You know, I'm not, not bashing uh, Dan Lanning on this show too much. Uh, I think that he, he probably had some lessons to learn after that game, but, but ultimately, you know, their team was in it um, and, and he bet on his team and, and, and kind of lost in some ways. So, um, you know, it, it was a really good game though, against a really, a really, really good Washington team. Um, and then you got Penn state and, you know, I, I think it's interesting that Penn State and Ohio State <clears throat> are tied this week, and now they're going to go face each other. You know, that wasn't by design. We didn't get together and and work the numbers in some way that that, that happened. But um, I, I do think it's interesting. And I think that the, these are two stylistically very different teams. I think um, Penn State and Michigan stylistically match up better, you know, and they, they look like the same team in some ways. And Ohio State kind of doesn't, um, you know, uh, on paper. You know, I think that Penn State has a really a better offense right now than Ohio State, uh, which is surprising. But they do it in different ways. They do it with their running backs and tight ends. Yeah. And Ohio State does it with the outside guys, you know. Um, and, you know, th they're trying to figure things out with Kyle McCord on offense. And they did a good job this week, scored uh, 41 points uh this week against Purdue. So, you know, that was a season high for them. Maybe they're, maybe they're starting to, to find their stride on offense. Um, but Ohio state's got a much better defense than, than we're used to seeing and potentially better than Penn State's even. Um, and that's saying something because Penn state's been pretty dang good as well. Um, completely shut out Massachusetts, which I mean, most teams would, but, um, but you know, they've had some, some pretty complete, complete games. Uh, you know, the Iowa game, you know, comes to mind and, um, you know, I'm just really excited to see both of these teams play in a big game because we haven't seen it yet. So, you know, we've got yeah. good on good. <clears throat> and now we get to watch this game. I've, I've had this one circled for a while. I told you preseason that Penn State's going to get up and get either Michigan or Ohio State. And they're going to end the season 11 and one and go to the playoffs. So they're, they're in position. I hope that they get the win this week because it, it would make me look that much better. And also, I think Michigan's a, a better team right now than than either of these two. So I think that the easier win for Penn State would be Ohio State uh, this week at Ohio State. And I'm just really excited to watch this game, and um, we'll be breaking that down here later this week. Out of that grouping, I, I think the biggest thing that we can take away from, from those rankings is we think North Carolina is a, a step ahead of Florida State right now yes um that that's that's the way we feel about it as we go into week eight um cry about it okay comment about it tell us how we're wrong florida state fans but um i don't think we are i i and i think that we're going to see i think that we're going to see um we already basically talked about ohio state but they were tied at five number four washington number three oklahoma and then tied at number one We've got Georgia and Michigan. I just don't think it'd be right to have Georgia be ahead of Michigan at this point. I don't think that that would be correct. I, I just, I, I maybe it's not discernible the difference between the two. Um, I don't think there's a talent gap per se, but Michigan has handled their business in, in a better fashion than Georgia has this year. I mean, there's just really no no two ways about it. Georgia's had issues turning the ball over and, and put the ball on the ground. Um, Michigan really hasn't had issues with anything. So hard to really find anything to nitpick on with Michigan. Seriously. I mean, they uh, other than the fact that they just kind of have like a spring game every Saturday, it seems like um, they're, they're starting to turn up the heat a little bit as they took care of business and put up 52 points on the board this past week. Um, Oklahoma was idle. They're undefeated, running off that Red River shootout win, and they're right where they should be in this ranking. Um, probably going to be seeing Oklahoma Texas rematch, um, as really nobody else in that Big Twelve is worth a dang. So these two are on a collision course um, to meet again, and that's going to be very interesting to to see. But um, we'll let we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, and we'll break down some of the games that we got coming up for these top contenders coming up this week. But Washington is the big mover, I guess. They haven't moved a ton. We've had them highly ranked anyway. So really nowhere else for them to go um, as far as up uh, up the, the rankings. 
I think they're right where they should be. And if Washington takes care of their business, they got a good chance to go to the playoff. But um, they're, again, in that Pac-12 where I think there's going to be a ton of attrition by the end of the year. So uh, it'll be a, in my opinion, it'll be a miracle, honestly, if Washington and Oregon make it because uh, uh, of the path that both of them have for the rest of the season. And, and I, I could easily see um, Washington taking a regular season loss at, at some point, and, and then it's going to come down to uh, a one-loss Washington and a one-loss Oregon, and, and maybe the one-loss champion goes to the, to the final four there. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens in other leagues um, and how many undefeated champions there are. But with all that being said, I think it was pretty predictable uh, top group there, and we're going to get some more answers in week eight. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, we, we've got some good matchups in week eight, you know, but going back to, um, you know, your point, I, I, I think that, you know, I, I certainly hope that a, a Pac-12 team makes it this year, you know, and and I didn't pick any to be in the playoffs. I thought that they would sort of cannibalize each other. I had no idea that they would all be this good or or that so many would be this good, I should say. But um, but yeah, I, I could see, you know, Oregon State's got to go play um, Oregon and and uh, Washington at the end of the year. So, you know, we, we talked about yeah. it. They could easily get one of those two, uh, you know, and come up with a win. So, um, but yeah, yeah. So, so I'm excited to see how all that shakes out. And then, you know, with, with Georgia and Michigan, um, one of the things that, that I kind of ca- came to realize in watching how – different the two teams played this past week similarly um you know they played similar opponents as far as um competitive you know uh games this week you know georgia had had vanderbilt and um and michigan you know they had uh indiana so you know really both teams should have walked away pretty easily with this and and georgia really didn't um you know, they ended up winning 37 to 20 against Vanderbilt. Michigan did handle business and they won 52 to seven against Indiana. Um, and, and what I really thought of as being the difference is experience. Um, Michigan has the more experienced players. They don't have as talented of a roster as Georgia, but they have the the most experience. And I think that they had the most leadership um, or has more leadership than Georgia, you know, on their roster. Uh, a lot of juniors and seniors on that roster. And, you know, we saw it from Georgia. Um, you know, they've always kind of kind of slept walk through a game or two uh, each season. And, and a lot of college footballs, uh, a lot of college football teams do. But Georgia had a lot more leadership the past two years than they have right now. You know, you, you go back two years and they had uh, Jordan Davis and Nicobe Dean. Um, you know, Stetson Bennett was kind of coming into his own. Um, and they had some guys, they've always got some guys on the offensive line, um, you know, and, and at running back, but, uh, then last year, you know, they, they had, um, they had, um, uh, Keely Ringo, you know, and they had Chris Smith, um, they had Nolan Smith, they had Stetson Bennett, you know, they had these guys who were actual leaders, you know, bona fide leaders and, and they were, they were their top playmakers. Now this year they've got Brock Bowers, who's who's known to be kind of a quiet guy. You know, he's the probably the best player in college football, really. And I don't know that he's much of a leader um, as some of these other guys. And then on the other side, you've got Malachi Starks. You know, who's who's another one of the top players in the country on defense, but he's not as vocal. You know, and he said it in an interview that um, he's still trying to figure out his role as a leader. So so there are some things that. Um, that I point to and say, okay, if the leadership isn't quite there, maybe that's a reason why Georgia is is not struggling to beat these these lesser opponents, but not winning as well as they should. Whereas uh, Michigan is in full stride right now, and you know they they just I think that they have better leadership on their roster right now. I guess is my point. Um, the good news for Georgia fans is that they don't play this week, so you know they're not going to play until the playoffs if they if they both end up in the playoffs. Um, so they have some time to figure it out, you know, at Georgia. But uh, I, I agree that, you know, and, and I was, I'm the one who put Georgia at one still and Michigan at two. I really like that they're both tied for us uh, because 
it was tough for me to, to pick Georgia over Michigan. Um, I think that Michigan is playing complete football right now. We just got to see them play somebody of importance, uh, which I guess it'll be um, Ohio State here soon, or, or I think Penn State may be the maybe the game before that but anyways they've got some they've got some good matchups coming up and uh, i'm just ready to see them play a top 25 team for once yeah absolutely uh i i I know everybody's itching to see it and that those games are always at the end of the year uh those those east games and the big 10 east is absolutely loaded definitely the best division in college football with three teams that are clear top tens um going to be interesting to see how that shakes out or if uh, I, I got a feeling as everybody's going to dole a loss out to one another, uh, maybe other than Michigan. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but we, we got, we got time in between now and that, that Michigan Ohio state game at the end of the year. So we'll see how everybody's doing. And yeah, Georgia, I don't think Georgia's played their best football yet. I, I think that we saw a glimpse of it in that Kentucky game. Um, I think there's a chance that this team can play better. Um, not probably not going to be playing better on offense without Brock Bowers, I wouldn't imagine. Um, but I'd still think that this is a lethal offense for Georgia, and I uh, think that they can improve by just not turning the ball over. And I think they're going to be all right. Yep. So, um, with all that being said, that's our top twenty-five for this week. We're going to be breaking down the games um, for week eight, going over all those, giving our our previews, predictions. And then at the end of the week on Friday, we're going to have our Between the Lines betting show. So we hope that you will come join us for all that. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. That way you know whenever we go live. That way you know when we upload videos and all that good stuff. And you can come come on and, and conversate with us. And let's talk some college football. But for first and long college football show, we're signing out for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will talk to you later this week. Thank you. Thanks.